Hey everybody, it's me, Super Paul Games. Welcome to a brand new LP I'm doing called Rhyme or Reason. Let's see how it goes. I was feeling rather blue. I had nothing to look forward to. That's a beautiful thing. When I told my best friend so, she's a motherfucking hoe. She said, pack your things, go! Wait, that's from Hit the Road, Jack. Or is it Tainted Love? Taint Love. I love me some taint. I'm a terrible songwriter, but Karen's a wonderful, wonderful friend. I told her I had a week off of work and that I probably would be spending it at home sulking. She said, come on over. Like that. She just invited me over. She only had one warning to make. She was going to touch me in my coochie hole. <laughs> in the winter, this place hibernates. I told her her town was a butterfly waiting for summer to flutter her glittery wings, her vaginal wings. <laughs> she told me my poetry sucked. My family didn't beat an eyelash over me suddenly deciding to go stay with a friend. Your family's probably like, I'm glad she's leaving. I never yet met in person, but they all agreed on one thing. You're going to the Silver Shore in winter, you'll be bored out of your mind. From the windows of my bus, I see the souvenir shops, the ice cream parlors, the lights off, the shutters down closed. I like how her parents are like, go wherever the fuck you want, I don't care. Many of the houses are vacant too. Big signs loudly claiming they're for rent! Rent me, bitch! Karen's family owns a cafe. They have lived on the Silver Shore all of their life, and their cafe is popular with the locals. I like that. He's like, I'm looking at you. And this is my star. It should be around this corner. Bam! A very tall guy carrying a guitar case shoves me out of the way. Hey! He doesn't even look over his shoulder, he just storms off! Somebody grabs my arm! That's the guitar case you're carrying! Yeah! She leans closer- what? She leans closer to me! She leans closer to me, a smile on the corner of her lips! And you're carrying a guitar inside? Norman, I wouldn't make a joke about- no, it's just the perfect size for my machine gun! But I really want to know what's up with her! Indeed! Alright, okay, so this is the narrator. She leans even closer, definitely smiling now. An electric guitar? No, a folk guitar, because I'm a folk. I'm a folk you. She huffs, and I seem to have lost whatever attraction I had for her. Wow, she moves fast. I don't love you anymore. Uh, whatever. She looks past me. I think she's trying to see if she can still catch the tall guy from earlier. That guy with the guitar case turned left on that corner, I think. You love him now, don't you? Screw him, I just kicked him out of the band. She smiles in my direction again, but this one is less flirty and probably more sincere. Though I lucked out and got myself a replacement already. Well, maybe if you find me an electric guitar, I can play it. You just met her. She whips out her index finger pointing between my eyes. I'd be more worried if it were a gun, but apparently it's a serious enough business for her. Do you want to try out for my band? But I'll be here for just one week, and I don't even know your name. Oh, those are my choices. Um, I don't even know your name. You want to try out for my band till we're formally introduced? You're a whore. I'd like to know what kind of music you play, too. Uh, you're not very spontaneous. My name's Nancy. I'm Ryan. She nods at my suitcase, like, only now it's worth her notice. So where are you staying? With a friend. We, we've never met offline yet. Oh, you should have come in the summer so she could show you around. Oh, uh, but that's when she's most busy. Her family owns a cafe. Which one? I live here. I might know of it. It's called the Murma. The Merman's Tale? Her face lights up. I'm happy I don't have to disappoint her this time. Wow, this is a lot of moodiness going on. The Mermaid's Tale, yes! Awesome, do you think you could introduce us? You want me to introduce you to the cafe? Alright. Again, that glint in her eyes. You want to book a gig there too? She looks a little embarrassed, but not openly so. It's the only way to get ahead. We have to play and play and play in any and all venues available. First, you gotta get a guitarist, don't you? But I already have. You haven't even heard me play. Give me your hand. I give her my hand. She touches my fingertips. 
Your fingers are callous. You practice often, don't you? No, my vagina's just really hard when I rub it. What? I try to make, take my hand back, but she holds it firmly in hers. Hand rape! Then she whips out a marker and writes on my palm. My number? Call me tomorrow and we'll see about rehearsing, huh? Sure. She winks at me, then walks away. I've been on the Silver Shore all of 15 minutes, and I might have made a friend already. And here I am. Although Karen and I have discussed the silliest, most ridiculous, and embarrassing moments of our lives in great detail, this is our first time standing in front of each other. I tentatively pat her soldier. She looks morbidly sad. She grins and hugs me tightly. You smell like toothpaste. <laughs> what? You smell like those pine show deodorants are hanging cars. <laughs> we smile. Karen's voice is different than I imagined it'd be. Come on, let's go upstairs so you can unpack. I'm gonna unpack your coochie hole. What? My room is tiny but neat. I know it's more like a shoebox in a room, but I, I'm not planning on keeping you locked in here. <laughs> well, maybe a little bit. I thought maybe I could help around, you know, at the cafe. No! I didn't bring you here to work. Who you take me for? Um, I will have to work my shift flow, but we'll find something for you to do. I show her the palm of my hand. Maybe I found something already. You animal! She's just pretending to be scandalized, but I feel a bit flustered. I didn't mean it like that. It's strictly art an artistic liaison. I turn around and start unpacking. Her name is Nancy. Her band has a gig on Friday. She lost her guitar player. And then she found you. And I've never played in front of an audience before, though. Oh. Must be exciting. Karen finishes out one of my notebooks. Or Karen fishes out one of my notebooks from out of the depths of my suitcase and starts flipping the pages. Do you think you can convince them to play one of your songs? I hadn't thought of that at all. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if she'll like him. She seemed to like you, so I said her taste seems questionable so far. She might love him. I throw my spare socks at her. And she runs away. She's scared of, so scared of socks, apparently. She considers that her cue to leave me alone to unpack, but I can hear her laughter as she goes down the stairs. <laughs> there's not a lot to unpack, and there's not a lot of place for unpacking either. Soon I find myself lying on my back, staring at the palm of my hand. I write a short text to Nancy. I stare at the screen of my cell phone for a couple of minutes, waiting for an answer, but soon the long bus ride takes its toll on me, and I fall asleep. Sleep, old. Whoa. Morning, Rom. Morning? Yeah, it's like 11 o'clock. It's closer to noon in the morning, I guess. Well, I overslept. Take it easy. You're on vacation. Karen? I'm not Karen, though. And with that, she disappears down the stairs. What? After washing myself and putting on some clean clothes, I follow. There! There, see? Nancy points at me like she spent three months on a boat and I'm an island. I told you if I knew a friend of the owners. Hi? Hi! Nancy, that scared me. The waitress walks off in fear. There's something about her expression I wish I could decipher. So, good morning. Are you ready for stardom yet? I blink at her. Are you ready to try out for my band? Oh, yeah, sure. I'm not a morning person. Have you solved our little problem? I bite my lip. I wonder what our problem was. Your guitar! We need a real guitar, you know? My full guitar is quite real, but I guess that doesn't count. I rub my eyes with the back of my hand. Uh, well, yeah, let's try to get a guitar! Let's try and get some coffee, too, huh? You're not quite keeping up with me. Well, we could get some coffee. We're in a cafe. Yes, we are! Waitress! It's Karen who shows up, and I see a hundred questions behind her smile. Karen, this is Nancy. Oh, you're Karen? So nice to meet you. Rhymes said the greatest things about you. Did I? Great things about me, like what? Like your family owns the place, which is basically all I need to hear. They both laugh. <laughs> so, how do you feel about supporting local indie bands? I can't re recommend you to my parents if I ain't heard you yet. Makes perfect sense. May I invite you to my next concert? 
You may. Okay, but will you come? If you touch me in the right places, I might. I mean, okay, I will. They seem to hit it, hit it off passably well. So have you heard Ryan play before? Yeah, you've heard Ryan play before, I suppose. I have. Ryan's uploaded a couple of videos online. Dirty videos. <laughs> and then I quickly deleted them. And what did you think about it? I thought Ryan was being needlessly shy. No, I mean about the music. It's sweet, sometimes it's very sad. Don't worry, Ryan. We'll be playing the Burnt Bridges now. You'll love it. If we can find a guitar. Yeah, we gotta find you a guitar first. Hey, Karen, are you friends with any musicians? With musicians? You can borrow a guitar from? Um, I know someone who works in a music shop. They sell instruments. Oh, really? Music shops sell instruments? I didn't know that. Thanks, Karen. Close enough. Tell us where to find the store. Nancy, you live in here, this small town. How do you not know where the only fucking music store is? She makes it sound as though it's a treasure hunt. It's a treasure cunt. Karen writes the piece in a, uh, the address in a piece of paper. In a piece, as opposed to on a piece of paper. And Nancy swears, fuck damn, that she can totally find the place. Just like that, we're off. I like your friend. She's warm. And her family seems to own such a convenient venue. That too. Way to use your friend and not even hang out with her. You traveled all this way and now you're hanging out with this other person? Well, she's sincere. Now let's see how big of a discount we can get off your guitar from this nice person at the instrument shop. But it's the guy who bumped into us early. Hey, shouldn't we uh, meet him first? Don't worry, he'll help us. I wouldn't count on it just yet. Are you shocked because I'm always asking things of people? N no. We're social bees. We're not meant to be alone. To get ahead alone. At heart, we all know this. I would never take something that's not offered to me. Nancy stops on her tracks and holds out her hands. I hold it a bit unsure. It never hurts to ask for what you want. She grabs it with a grin and starts walking away. Swinging her arm. We look like children walking like this. And most people are nice. Most people want you to succeed. Do they now? We walk a bit swinging our arms before we just stop holding hands. But by that time, I'm convinced. It's not that I want her to succeed. It's that I know she will. The poor guy at the instrument store will never know what hit him. Especially if we punch him. The guy at the counter states an impossible price. I can't afford that. I'm sorry, but I can't sell it for less. Nancy bats her eyelashes. Kitty from the Mermaid's Tale recommended this place to us. Her name's Karen. Oh, Karen, how nice of her to recommend us. Karen's cool. So, since we're all, like, friends, can we get a discount on that guitar? Sorry, um, no. Please? No. Nancy pouts, and she tries a new tactic, because she's clearly very manipulative. Could we maybe, like, borrow it? No. Nancy leans on the countertop and smiles. Could we, um, maybe, like, rent it? The guy at the counter seems impervious to her charm. No. She turns her charm on me. So you have your folk guitar? I suppose you could give it to him as a... Uh, I will not accept a guitar as a part of payment. This is not a pawn shop. This is not a rental shop. This is an old-fashioned kind of shop where you pay for purchases with money. Credit cards are fine, too. Nancy bites down on her lip. I think I know what she's thinking. Most people are nice. Nice people want you to succeed. Maybe if Nancy goes down on him, she'll get the guitar. This guy is not nice. There's a pause, a stalemate. Nobody moves. Nobody says anything. It's weird how people can be quiet and still in completely different ways. The guy at the counter seems like he's made of marble. Quiet still. Uh, willing to wait forever. Nancy looks like a lightning rod. Quiet still. She'd fry you with electricity if you touched her. The bell hanging above the door rings as the door opens and a customer walks in. Uh, yo, hello, I'd like to buy some strings, bro. Nancy's electricity powers her smile. Are you in a band? Uh, no. He smiles modestly. Uh, I'd like to be, though. Do you want to be in mine? We have a gig in a week. We just lost our lead guitar. Uh, really? Uh, where are you playing? We're playing at Horrible Dancers. I don't know if you... Yeah, I've been there! The dancing is horrible! What kind of music you play? 
Nancy and the guitarist strike up a conversation. Their voices animated, their eyes bright, as they laugh and banter. Ah, oh, god dang it, I'm not gonna be in a band! I stand in here forgotten. Not by everyone, though. The guy at the counter doesn't even bother to hide his smile. I thought my expression was one of polite interest, but apparently it is of utter, utter dismay. Funny how my face matches my feelings. This is the kind of situation that sparked the disaster back home. A moment when I'm either going to try too hard or give up. No middle ground! I know it, I know it, I've been here before. I tried to make my face impassive, but I know it's not working because he keeps staring smiling. I swear it's like he's feeding off my despair. I have to stop this. STOP LAUGHING AT ME! <laughs> the guy at the counter rolls his eyes, but at least he stopped smiling as I broke his will. What's wrong, Rhyme? N nothing Really? Everything okay? I can't think of anything to say. I nod yes. The guitarist finishes his purchase while Nancy clings to my arm. She can tell something's wrong, but not what? Not even I can say. Come along! We'll go get his stuff, then we'll go to my place! So everything's well. Everything's well that ends right, right? We end up at Nancy's place. The band's drummer is Lucas, Nancy's younger brother. Brian, that's the name of the guitarist, plays quite well. I can't summon up the guts to ask him to lend me his guitar. It'd be weird, right? It'd be awkward, especially since he just joined the guitar. Uh, the band was going to sit and watch you play. Lucas brings some chips and some orange juice. Both chips and juice are nice, but they don't exactly go well together. That's how I'm feeling here. I don't go well together. They're nice and I'm nice, but we don't go well together. Uh, I'll be going now, okay? Are you sure we haven't even started playing yet? No, uh, I think it's time for me to go see how Karen's doing. I think they've forgotten about me even before I crossed the threshold. I spent the rest of my holidays with Karen. We wanted to start the mornings jogging on the beach, but we eventually faced that we hate riding, so we settle on walking a lot. I play my guitar for Garen Karen a bit, but we mostly talk. When I come back home, I find myself rested but not changed. But that's it! That's it! That's all? You didn't even get a make out with Karen or anything? Fuck. It's gotta be a better ending. Alright, this time instead of screaming at the guy to not laugh, laugh at us, desperate times make for desperate measures. We need to get a guitar. I place my wallet on the counter. Uh, here's my debit card, here's my ID. I'm gonna leave them right here. The guy at the counter leans in. He's more than ready to conspire with me. Uh, tell me, what's your name? What was it? Um, Peter? Peter, Peter. Peter, ah, uh, damn it. Uh, so when's the store closed, Dick? I mean, Peter. Uh, 8 p.m.? Let me borrow your cheapest guitar just for today, please, please! If I'm not back with it by 8, you charge me full price for the guitar as you should. The guy at the counter, Peter, nods. Ah, uh, fighter, eh? When I must, I'll fight the fuck out of you! He grabs my wallet and points at the blue guitar by the corner. Yeah, go get her, tiger. I hold it. It's not the weight I'm used to, and it won't sound the same, but how different can it be? Um, I do have to point out something. <clears throat> I have an electric guitar. You need more than just the electric guitar, lady. You're going to need at least um, uh, an amp and some chords. Uh, hey, Nancy. Hmm? Um, I made a deal with Peter here. He's going to let me use the guitar for the tryout. Nancy hooks one of her arm, arms with mine. Wonderful, didn't I tell you? Nice people want you to succeed. Nancy and the other guy and me leave the store all smiles. Peter and my wallet stay behind. That'd be funny if Peter just spent all the money on your debit card. <laughs> uh, have you seen that movie? Wait, what was this? Have you seen that movie? The one with the Karate Kid? Karate Kid plays guitar and he has to duke it up with the devil and the power of rock? Can you remember? Uh, forget it then, it was nothing like that. But for starters, I have nothing in common with the Karate Kid, and the guitarist, his name turns out to be Brian, is certainly not the devil. He seemed to be okay, likable guy. Oh wait, I think this is narrated. So though I entered this place ready for a musical showdown, I didn't feel cheated or let down when he turned out to be better than me. Welcome to Burnt Bridges, Brian! Oh, uh, thanks, this is gonna be fun! I guess that I'll, I'll be in the audience after all! Why can't you have lead and rhythm, dude? Hey, we could have two guitars! No, nah, I need to practice with this one. I'm more comfortable with my own guitar. I'd like to hear you play anyway. It's, uh, my style's different. I, I, I write my own songs, actually. 
I guess as much. Your name's too artsy for you not to be some kind of a writer. Oh? I didn't think it was that obvious. Lucas, Nasty's brother, is the band's drummer, and he quickly becomes my favorite person when he brings chips and orange juice. I thought they would start playing their instruments immediately, but they all start just start talking about music. I'm happy to join in. We all quickly eat our chips. Nom noms. Uh, maybe we should buy something else to eat. You got the munchies? I saw a grocery store on the way! We could get cookies, maybe! I love cookies! Uh, the grocery store is closed by this time? There's a supermarket that's open all night, like three blocks from here? Um, what time is it? Five past eight? Damn! I give every, uh, everyone the most cursory of goodbyes and run away. I literally sprint through the streets, guitar tucked under my arm. When I get to the store, it's almost half past eight. The close sign seems to mock me. Just my luck. I've wasted my savings on a guitar I don't need and can't play. That night, Karen and I stay awake watching episode after episode of a show about chefs that visit restaurants and scream all the time. I have a friend who loves that show. We have breakfast and I drink two cups of coffee. Karen is chipper and bright, but although I am happy enough, I feel like roadkill. So when Karen goes downstairs to work, I excuse myself and fall into the clutches of my comfy, comfy sofa. Hey, wake up! Huh? Wake up! What time is it? Hey, I fast hand, but I called you because you got a visitor. Nancy? I go downstairs, but I can't see Nancy anywhere. I'm not a morning person, but I think I could spot a girl with bright green hair if she were here. Then sitting at the table by the window, I spot Peter, the guy from the music store. Ah, uh, morning, ma. I desperately wave my hands in front of him before he utters my name on the debit card. Rhyme! Rhyme! My name's Rhyme! Please call me Rhyme. Uh, alright. Out of his pocket, he produces my wallet. He holds it in front of me, but makes no move to give it back. Crap, of course. You need my signature for payment to be valid, right? Uh, do you want the guitar? Um, no. But you didn't break it, you, you didn't break it or scratch it or anything, did you? No, it's it's perfect. It's upstairs. You want to go to my bedroom and see? He hands me my wallet. Thank you so, so, so much. I really couldn't afford it. I could tell. Do I look broke? Are you saying I look poor? I'll punch you in your poor hole. I suddenly remember that I haven't even washed my face. What I must look like is terrible. I quickly run a hand through my hair and hope I look casual. Hang on. I'll bring it right back. You can take it with you. Uh, I'd very much rather you brought it back yourself later today. Oh, okay. Man, he's very trusting. I thought maybe you wanted it back right now. You absolutely cannot keep it, but the star can wait for a few hours to get it back, you know? Oh, uh, 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 alrighty then, thanks. He points at me with his cup of coffee. Uh, so how'd it go? It seems awkward to tell my story standing in front of him. I tentatively put a hand on the back of the chair. He nods, I sit down in front of him. Looking at him, I suddenly feel a little sheepish, meh, about the way I acted yesterday. My long story gets very short. Yeah, it didn't go badly. We mostly ate chips and had orange juice, but I won't be joining the band. He was simply better at it than I was. Hmm, uh, you couldn't you volunteer to be a second guitar guy, a uh, backup vocals, tambourine player? <laughs> no, I don't think so. It was the very first time I'd ever tried to join a band at all. Nancy made it sound like it was so much fun! She is a really striking girl, worth auditioning for. Yeah, but it's not not like all I wanted was to impress her, you know. I thought I was going to be a part of something. I didn't want to be left out. It didn't help that you were looking like you thought it was so much fun. Uh, you seem so desperate. It was hilarious. I didn't think he'd say that out loud. He just grins. I didn't know if I I don't know if he can guess what I'm thinking or if he's just thinking about yesterday. I'm slightly offended anyway. Have you ever done anything stupid to get noticed? Well, yeah, I've done some very stupid things. It's just so I won't be noticed. He breaks a little piece of his muffin with his plastic fork. Uh, that's, that's that's why I helped you. He munches on his piece of muffin. Uh, I'd like to munch on your muffin. Your pants muffin. His mouth firmly closed. I'm impressed. I'd be leaving crumbs all over myself. How does she... <laughs> you helped me because I was being stupid? I helped you because you're willing to take a risk. That sounds a little better. Thanks. You, you, you're, you're welcome. In a parallel universe, you played a wicked guitar solo and launched a successful career. Your attempt on this one made it a, just a little bit more likely on the next one. 
That's a weird thing to say. I'm a weirdo. He sips his coffee, a perfect picture of nonchalance. He is a weirdo, and that was weird thing to say, but it made me feel better. <laughs> Thanks. Then don't mention it. I'll leave you to your breakfast. I like the way you eat that muffin. I gotta go. You're, you're not interrupting it. He parts another piece of muffin with his fork, then he edges the little plate forward closer to me. I gotta have had breakfast, you know! How would he know? Y you were staring. I, I, I might have been. I grab a piece of muffin and bite it. Delicious! So, so uh, what do you do when you're not attempting to join local indie bands? I wrinkled my nose. I have a boring job at a store! L like, like mine? No, I don't work with you! Crap, I didn't think that through. No, no, the work store I work in is, is boring. It's a supermarket, and I just sweep the floors and bag groceries and shit. I didn't mean to imply your job was boring. I bet it's cool. I mean, like, all the time. What I mean is, I'm very uncool at home, and I thought it'd be cooler here if only for a week. People don't even know my name here. I, I know your name. Pretend you don't, okay? May I ask what's wrong with it? Um... It, it, it's not my name! I didn't choose it! It's a name I'm forced to answer to when I'm at places I dislike! But Rob! Only people like me call, Rob, call me Rob! Got it, rhyme then. So you know, just remember my name! Who are you, Javert? Ah, <laughs> wrong musical! So, uh, I was thinking more of the lines of Babe! I'm gonna live forever! Isn't it beautiful when I sing it? Oh, so you uh, wanna live forever? And learn how to fly! I jumped off a building once and I broke my legs. Didn't work. Uh, I forgot the rest of the song. I bet it's something about said something about the sky. So you're not a musical buff? I like musicals, but I'm not an expert. I like uh, instrumental music more. Like when you shut up. Ouch! I'm a songwriter myself. Still not sorry. Sorry, I'm not sorry, as um, <laughs> Bunny Suit Gaming would say. It's just a preference. You can't say something like that and not explain yourself! Can't I? Just for that, I take another bite of his muffin and glare at him. Huh? Well, I prefer instrumental music because I don't like song lyrics in general. I don't think song lyrics in general are very meaningful. Oh, you just shout all over what she loves. I point my finger at his face. Mm, I'm offended! Wow, she's intense. He shrugs unfazed by my words. It might be because I'm still eating his breakfast. I'm not saying that every single lyric ever written is meaningless, only that most of them are. I grumble. My mouth is too full of muffin to be witty right now. Now, what, uh, what I'm not a very big fan of is it's... Uh, his left hand makes a very vague, circular motion as he searches for a word he can't find. Lyrics that can't be replaced with la-la-las. Words that are chosen just because they fit what was sung before. I think music should elevate you. You know, your heart, your head, both. Don't you agree? No! I like it when a song on the radio makes me tap my feet and smile, even if the song could be replaced with la-la-la-la-las. I like it when I read something that turns a feeling of mine into something prettier. There's something other people might want to listen to. Like my song about the Menzies. Hey, every lady, don't you get the Menzies? <laughs> it's a winner. Uh, you shouldn't have to prettify your feelings to make them be heard. What you need is better listeners who can understand your pain and what you're, where you're coming from. My feelings as they are don't make for pretty songs. Uh, I take real over pretty any day. This actually reminds me of conversations I have with a music friend of mine. <laughs> I'm more like him. I like to achieve both. He raises his cup of coffee to me as if toasting. To both. Then he sets his empty cup on the table. This was nice. It was. I looked down at my fingernails. It was nice screaming at him that you're mad at him? Weird. This little plate where his muffin once was is now a graveyard of crumbs. I might have eaten more than half of his breakfast. I'm a big girl. I'll buy you breakfast next time, pretty boy. Only, uh, only once the words leave my mouth, I realized that might have sounded like I was asking him out. I spent a few awkward seconds thinking on something to say that might clarify what I meant, and then I realized it's too late anyway, and then I realize I'm probably overthinking things again. I overthink things a lot, too. 
So, I'll be returning the guitar later today if that's okay with you, sweet britches. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, it is. I managed to leave without feeling awkward or saying anything too ridiculous. To me, it comes as a victory. A plus rhyme! Poor Karen, you're not even hanging out with her. You came to visit her. I have nothing better to do, so I decided to catch some sleep. My cell phone wakes me up. You came all this way to visit your friend and you don't even spend any time with her. It's a text from Nancy. Rhyme, if you're not busy, you want to hang out? I'm not busy at all, and I tell her so. I'm not busy, bitch. Since it's more or less on the way, I decide to return the guitar before I go to Nancy's place. No, a woman I've never seen before sits behind the counter. Uh, I was supposed to, uh, I brought, is Peter here? You must be Rhyme. Oh, I, oh, I guess Peter told me about her. May I ask you a question? But what exactly did he tell her? Uh, yes, of course. I smile, but I wait for a question with unease. Do you have any siblings? What? Yeah, two actually. I'm a middle child. Why? I just wondered what you were called. Your parents were so original in naming you. So he didn't tell her Rhyme is not my actual name. My oldest brother is called Verse and my little sister is called Melody. The truth would disappoint her, but these names make us both smile. It's okay to lay to old people. They're almost dead anyway. Lovely names. Yes, they are. Here's the guitar. I don't know how to finish the phrase. If I say I borrowed it, would it get Peter in trouble? Oh, yes, thank you so much. Peter has physical therapy today, otherwise he would have received it himself. I stand there trying not to ask about things that are none of my business. Do you want me to tell him something? No! Don't tell him I love him! Just, uh, just anyway, tell him thanks. I will. Bye! Nancy's mom ushers me upstairs to the attic. I guess we went over to Nancy's house. I expected to see them playing their instruments, but instead I find them sitting on the floor looking intense. Nancy's taking notes. Her handwriting is unexpectedly cute. What is this? You drawing battle plans? Of a sort? It's our playlist? Uh, the songs will play on the concert. I know what a playlist is, you asshole. We have to find a perfect combination of songs that we can play that sound well together that fit the audience at Horrible Dancers. Every time I hear that name, I can't help but think it has to be the worst name for a club I've ever heard. Uh, what music do they play at Horrible Dancers? Uh, last time I went through the band, it was one of those ensembles that play heavy metal covers of songs from Japanese cartoons. Well, that's unique. Okay, we're not doing that. Bummer, I would have liked that. Last time I went there, they had a DJ that wanted to be like that guy, the one with a haircut. We're not doing that either. Hell no. So what are you doing? That's what we're trying to settle right now. Uh, can you guys play Nirvana? All apologies, you know? Sliver, something like that. Ah, uh, we can play Come As You Are, as I want you to be. Uh, how about some Soundgarden, maybe? Um, no. How about something written this century? Uh, Placebo? How old are you, really? Uh... You could uh, download the tabs of the song to practice, maybe. Nancy looks like she's bitten a lemon. Brian winces. We don't have time to learn new songs. Neither Nancy nor Lucas can read sheet music. That's irrelevant. Even if we could, it would take more time than we have right now. We have ridiculously little time to rehearse songs we already know. As you can see, it's a sore topic. It's not! It might not be a sore topic, but the tone of Nancy's voice makes me want to talk about something else immediately. So, been watching anything interesting lately? Shouldn't they be focusing on their on the band gig instead of talking about TV shows? My question is met with sullen silence. Nancy bites the top of her pencil. Brian shrugs. I'm begin I begin to feel redundant. It's one of those feelings I like to feel I uh, I less like to feel. I quickly make an exit. I want to be in the band. I have a real guitar in real life. It's electric. Let me in the band, Nancy. I'll play Nirvana. I can play some breed. I go back to the cafe, but can't see Karen anywhere. I can't see her pants either. Actually, just the other waitresses. I have the impression that Karen and this girl are not fast friends. Yesterday, Karen introduced me to her. 
Almost as an afterthought, and this girl did tell me her name, but she spoke so fast I didn't really get it. Candy? Candles? Girl that talks too fast? I thought you were supposed to be with Nancy. I don't know her, but I want to get along with everyone, so I answer with a smile. Yeah, they're kind of busy today. Didn't want to bother them. And I tell you about the band. Um, that's still kind of smart. No, I'm not in the band. <laughs> They're taking it personally. You're leaving in a few days. I think it'll make more sense to work with someone around here. Someone who might stay for more than one cafe. Yeah, that makes sense. I really don't want to be rude, but... Have you seen Karen? She took a trip to the hospital. Wh what? Oh, shit, it's just a flesh wound. She's joking, but I gape at her, horrified. She dropped a glass and cut into her leg. Seriously, no big deal. Could you give me directions? So I can find my friend who's at the hospital? Still down, I'm serious. It wasn't a big cut or anything. Could you tell me how to get there anyway, please? She rolls her eyes, but she eventually does give me directions, and I run off. She's not very nice. It's not a huge hospital, but it's not a huge city. It doesn't take me long to find Karen. Ugh, I almost toppled over when I run to hug her. You're all right! My, um, I think we just came to this town to watch Karen work. Does it hurt when you fell from heaven? Nah, it wasn't a big cut, see? She shows me. There's gauze around her calf, but that's it. And she's walking normally. Gosh, I was so scared, Karen! I didn't know what I'd do without you! Hey, it was none. They gave me a few stitches. Bitches need stitches sometimes, you know? Hey, but that's life. I still feel horrible for not being there for you. Melodramatic much. I'm fine. It's alright. I'm so glad you're okay. How, how glad? Really glad. Glad enough to touch my cujo. <laughs> glad enough to buy me a pizza, I mean. Glad enough to buy you pizza and ice cream. Uh-huh. They must have told you some story back there. Oh no, I guess I just overreacted. Candles seem so cold. What do candles have to do with anything? I didn't get her name right than Candy? Candace. Candace is nice, though. Um, I just thought she was being careless about you being wounded. She snorts. Oh, oh. God, I did it in real life. That wasn't pleasant. Wounded? Maybe it's just she don't like you. No, she has no reason to dislike you. I haven't taken a single day off. I don't really see the relation between the one thing and the other. On summer, we hire more people to wait the tables, but the rest of the time, it's just the two of us. Oh, she doesn't like sharing her friend. We're not on the busiest season, but it's busy enough for two, so leaving her all alone even for a week would be cruel, me. Karen sighs. I came all the way over here to see you, and you can't make time to hang out? We'll have another... Well, I'll tell you another waitress when I leave for college this year. But we'll cross that river when we get there. In the meantime, I'll do everything I can. Uh, you could say it's my whole philosophy. <laughs> It's a good trait for a waitress trying to juggle many plates. Sometimes you drop them though. Don't try me, Karen. Don't try me. Yeah. I'm kind of worried of dropping you. <laughs> I'm not a plate. No, but I know. I'm not being the best hostess for you. Are you okay? You having a good time? Would you like to? Yeah, definitely. I know I'm leaving you alone by day, but all my nights are yours, hun cakes. Don't make any false promises. Platonically yours. That's more like it. My cell phone wakes me up. Well, oh, look at the sun spin. Are you busy? I'm not busy, like at all, but it wasn't much fun hanging out with Nancy yesterday. Would you like to help me out? Please? Even though I can't hear her voice as she says it, I can imagine it. It's enough to make me smile and tell her she can count on me. You give in so easy. I'm greeted by a very enthusiastic Natch Nancy with a pile of printed posters. We're gonna put these up today! I grab a stack of them, they're rather simple. I expected a big flaming logo or something. Lucas is at school and I haven't been able to reach Brian yet, so it's just you and me today. Oh great, so that was her last choice? Uh. So you probably want us to split to cover more ground? Split up? What is this, a horror movie? No! No, I want you to come with me. Come with me and keep me company. That sounds really, like, fun, actually. What's that supposed to mean? You thought you'd be bored? I didn't realize I said that out loud. Yesterday wasn't much fun, was it? No, I just... 
I can't promise it'll be fun today, but I promise I won't ignore you. Deal? I smile her at her and off we go. I start taping posters to the wall carefully when Nancy shakes her head with disapproval. It's supposed to be messy. It shows our rebel spirit. And it takes far less time. We start taping posters haphazardly. Nancy claps when I tape up one upside down. Perfect! Kind of hard to read. It'll make people pay attention. We move on. I st I'm startled by the Ramones as they start screaming out, Hey ho, let's go! But it turns out it's only Nancy's ringtone. I love the Ramones. I thought you were gonna you were into music written this century. Don't diss the classics, child. I need to be sedated. Nancy picks up the phone. Mom? No, I can't, Mom. I'm putting up posters for the concert with Ryan. No, I can't. Can you stop being a douche, Mom? Can't Duke, Dukas, Lucas do it later? He said Dukey that came out of your vagina, Mom. This is important, too. Mom! And so begins an undignified dance of the living at Mom and Dad's. Being a very undignified uh, dancer of the same myself, and knowing it sucks to have to witness it, I do the only thing I can. I take several steps away from her and tape some posters to the walls. I concentrate so very hard on not hearing anything that I don't hear anything. I'm surprised when Nancy puts her hand on my shoulder. She either hung up or her mom did. I don't have to ask how it went because I have experience. I know you never win. I hate her! But I still have to do what she says. Her house, her rules. Is that like is it like that for you too? Yeah, mom, my mom, it's, my dad won't pay much, but I'm saving every penny so I can move out of that house. Nancy sighs. My mom supports us, you know. She believes in Lucas and me and our will to play music, but I still hate her when she interrupts me. Come on, I'll walk you back to Karen's. What about the posters? Eh, I'll try to put them up tonight or tomorrow, whatever. Uh, don't you have to rehearse tonight? Yeah. Why don't you try... Uh, why don't... Why, damn it! Don't you want me to stay and put them up? You would? Sure. But you'd be all alone. Karen has to work on his shift, and I've been spending time alone anyway. It's either this or Tumblr. So many dirty pictures on Tumblr. And I know it's important to you that people know about the concert. So leave it to me. I'll make this up to you, I swear. I'll be sure to remind you. Ooh. You flirt? She kisses me lightly on the cheek. I wish she'd kiss me somewhere else, then slips away. With my posters tucked under my arm, I start walking. It's a cold day, but it's nice to walk under the sunlight, ta taping posters on the walls. Then the sun sets, and the air goes cold. These particular streets don't look very busy to me. Maybe I should have asked where the best place is. For posters are. Nancy probably won't answer, but maybe I can get Karen to tell me. I take out my phone, but the battery's dead. I was feeling pretty cool an adventure in a friendly city, ready for fun and romance. But the very sight of the black screen of my cell phone turns me into the silly tourist who has no idea of how to get anywhere alone. I swallow loudly for no one to hear. Then I walk. I think it's time to face that I'm lost. Eureka the hospital! I've been here before! I know how to get home! Even if I can't find my way here from... Uh, from here to Karen's cafe, there are definitely going to be payphones here somewhere. A hand taps my shoulder. Hey, uh, is everything all right? Is anybody hurt? Hurt? I'm uh, sorry, you were standing in front of the hospital looking worried. Uh, yeah, no, 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 no. Uh, I, I got lost, all right? I'm afraid I got lost. Uh, you want me to walk you to Merman's? I, I, I'm down here. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Peter walks with the cane, and he has a rather noticeable limp, but he doesn't move slowly. We have no problems walking at the same speed. Uh, so were you exploring? No, I was putting up some posters, you know, for Nancy's concert. Ah, uh, you did find a way to join the band after all. Kinda, I don't know, I'm like an assistant. Ah, uh, that doesn't sound very good. Ah, uh, will they play one of your songs? What's with you? You don't like lyrics. Ah, uh, you're still hung up on that, huh? I am! I keep thinking of things to tell you! I'm always come up with smarter answers way after the conversation is over! I do too, but, you know, I'm a little less teen angsty about it. Ah, uh, well, and what did you come up with? You dislike lyrics because you find them insincere, right? Ah, uh, yeah, that's more or less it. Well, you're doing it wrong! 
Um, that's a smashing argument you got there, sister. Uh, wait for it! That's not the argument! That's the conclusion! Uh, I thought the conclusion came at the end. Hush! Alright, I'm listening. You hear songs and you find them insincere because you don't think the writers actually feel what they're thinking about! Singing about! But you're doing it wrong, butt face! You have to listen to the songs that feel sincere to you! That apply to you! Ah, uh, the songs aren't written for me. If they apply to you, they're yours! That's how songs by other people have always felt to me! And you know what else? I even found a song for you! It's called Douche Face Asshole! Um, really? I look around. Run rather commonplace street. No self-respecting band would film a video clip here. Uh, what are you doing? Okay, it's not the place I would have chosen, but... I climb the steps leading to a rather neglected house. Words like violence break the motherfucking silence! Come crashing in into our world! Behind me a light turns on. I'm encouraged by the sight of my shadow on the pavement. I sing louder. She's probably waking people up. Painful to me! Painful right through me! Piss right through me! You can't understand! A, a voice so much more powerful than mine is heard in the empty streets. SHUT UP! I climb down the stairs in a hurry. I'm sorry, madam. I just wanted him to hear and enjoy the silence. Oh, that was a man. Whatever. Can't you just enjoy the silence quietly? The woman slams the door shut. Peter and I stare at each other. Ah, you gotta admit, it was a logical request. You have a nice voice. Well, I do sing a lot, you know, especially in the street. Uh, have you taken classes? No, not really. I'm glad you think my voice is beautiful. Ah, uh, you should. <laughs> it's not a compliment always when you say they should take less. Ah, uh, they teach you how to breathe properly and other tricks. Ah, uh, so you think I need classes? It's not an insult. Practice makes perfect, doesn't it? You got the skills, they're just a little rough, you know? You, you polish off the edges and bing, bang, boom. A believer in systematic education, I see! That I am. Are you in college? Sadly, no. Why? What would you have liked to study? Well, I'd like to study ladies, no. Um, Parallel Universe Peter would have had a scholarship. He would have studied music. In this timeline, this Peter has no idea of what to do. Never talk to the third person again! <laughs> Why is she so crazy and bossy? Uh, okay, I won't. I'm sorry. What the hell? Peter and I part ways, and I enter the Mormon's tale. Karen walks up to me determinedly. Oh, give, give, give me your cell phone. Seems dangerous to argue. I give Karen my phone. I'm charging this right now. There's no way I'm letting this happen again. Karen disappears with my phone in hand. She got a little bit angry. I'm surprised to see Nancy. <laughs> and me? And me! I came here looking for you and she got furious when I told her I'd left you alone. Karen returns, still looking a little bit tense. I decided to say something silly to cheer her up. Hey Karen! You said people were friendly here, but I got chased by an angry rabble just for singing. You are what? They're torches! They're folks! All ready to oppress a young musician for the crime of making music! Uh-huh. Crime is a flair for the dramatic. Let me translate. Let's see, you met someone, some hecklers. Like maybe two old little ladies. W one, but she seemed very angry. Peter and I had a run for our lives! Wait, you sang for Peter? I'm jealous. Things I do for Peter, you won't, you won't, why? And how did he respond to the serenade? Did he like it? Well, I didn't serenade him. I just, I kind of sang a song that fit him. Was it a love song? Uh, now I have to know. The Depeche the Modes enjoy the silence? It definitely is a love song. This is fun. Did he blush? Did he say anything? This is how girls are, really. Ouch, did I lead him on? Wait, what? Oh my god, you're blushing? I am not. So? So? Oh, this is a great joke to you both, huh? So? How can I answer without this sounding like a preschooler? Um. I'm not interested in men! It might have sounded a little more aggressive than I wanted it to. I'm not interested in men! There. 
Relax, we were just joking. I wasn't. I'm still jealous he got a song and I didn't. You have to sing for me later, okay? I will. Today is delivery day. We're going to deliver some babies? While Karen is busy tending to customers, that's all she ever does. Candles is on the back. Her name's Candace. Talking to the men who deliver the sodas and beers that will be served on the weekend. It's a rather tiring job, as not only you have to carry the crates inside, and they're quite heavy, but also make sure you've gotten everything you've asked for. As Candles counts the crates and bottles, I start carrying them inside. She frowns for a second, but then keeps counting. Working together, we finish the work twice as fast. That's everything. A job well done. I hold up a hand, waiting for it to high five. It's not your job. <laughs> My hand is still held high, but the high five doesn't seem to be happening. It actually is. This is one of the things I'm in charge of back home. That doesn't mean you're in charge of packing everywhere. It's a supermarket, though, so we also get fruit and dairy products. Yeah, well, you don't work here. I lower my poorly rejected hand. I thought I was helping! Sorry! Yeah, you were helping. Thanks for your help. Uh, um, I'll be leaving you alone then. Sorry to bother you! Cunt face! She shakes her head. I want to do something nice for you! She seemed not to like me much! Must everybody like you? Touche. I don't dislike you, is that enough? Of course. It's just, you always look glum! Not because of you, I don't even know you, it's Nancy. What? We went to high school together. I know it's pathetic to be hung up on people who are mean to you, but that's how I feel, okay? But you hear she's been showing up every day and it makes me uncomfortable. When she's nervous, she talks even faster than usual. She won't meet my eyes. What's she? Has she? Did she say anything to you these days? She doesn't have to. I wait for clarification. I don't want to talk about it. Got it. I, I'm sorry. I'll make sure to meet her elsewhere, okay? Why, why, why would you? Don't you just love Nancy? Maybe, but you don't. There are people I really wouldn't want to see, and it would suck if they hung out at my workplace. I won't make you go through that. She lets out a big sigh as she dries her hand with a towel. Oh, okay. That's nice to you, thanks. But she still won't meet my eyes. Today, Karen is quite busy, like every other day. I decide to phone Nancy and see what she's up to. Hey, Nancy! Oh. Hey, Rhyme! So what are your plans for today? This is us texting. Rehearsing! But I've got some time to kill before that. Want me to pick you up at Karen's? No! Oh, are you busy today? No, not that. Just, uh, let's not meet at Karen's. I don't know what Candle's deal is, but I don't want anybody uncomfortable... Uh, if I can avoid it. I close my eyes as I realize I really don't have any alternatives. I just don't know what the city enough. How about we uh, visit Peter? We could go look at some guitars. And maybe you could sing to him again, huh? I'm still jealous. But yeah, sure, let's meet there. When I get to the store, I realize Brian and Nancy are already there. Brian places his finger on his lips, shushing me before I attempt to speak. But I think Nancy and Peter wouldn't have noticed me even if I showed up riding an elephant. So I'm only making music if I play it exactly the way the dead du dead dudes say I have to. Otherwise, it's noise. I'm not saying there's only one way to play music. No, you're saying there are two. The wrong way and yours. Oh, uh, what's going on with you two? Uh, they've been going at it for like half an hour. Nancy looks over her shoulder at me. He's mad because I can't read sheet music. Peter doesn't even acknowledge my presence. He's too busy arguing. A lot of musicians can't read sheet music. No, no, that's not it. It's not because you can't. It's because you don't want to learn. I don't need to. It's limiting. Ignorance and inexperience will narrow the scope of the music you could play. I'm not limited. Nancy's finger starts drumming a beat on the counter. It's as if your vocabulary had less words. No, it's not. I'm listening to music all the time. I'm open to sounds. But you couldn't reproduce them. You can reproduce them by ear. I don't want to reproduce sounds. I'm not a record. Then you'll never sound like the musicians you admire. I want to sound like myself. The tight-lipped smile in Peter's mouth is not very friendly as he explains himself. Look, if you want to cook, you have to know what ingredients are used. Not just how the me meal tastes. Music is the same. See, I disagree with Peter. I don't get the point. If you're like, well, I can play Breed, similar to Nirvana. Well, if somebody wants to hear how Nirvana did it, they'll just go listen to Nirvana. If you do a cover, you want to put your own spin on it. Or more importantly, you want to do originals. 
And you weren't talking about playing songs by artists. Um, the, you were talking about playing songs by other artists, then learn how they're playing. The tone of his voice makes her furious. From a drumming beat with her fingers, she goes to a slam in the counter with her hand open. I'll make my own versions, thank you. How can I make you understand? Why do you insist on imprinting your views on me? I just want to help. I know you know about music. I know you were good. You were good, but what you are now is jealous, man. You can talk the talk, but you can't walk the... Peter looks away. This conversation is over. Oh, whoa, whoa, what's up, Peter? You want me to give her shit, but once they give you some shit, you walk away? That's not cool, man. Oh, of course, the prince is spoken. Prince Donglebong. Leave. Damn right I'll leave. Nancy stomps away from the store. I hesitate, then go after her. I won't bow down to that guy out of pity for his tragic backstory. I have my own opinions, and they're every inch as valid as his. Pretentious jerk! She's positively fuming. I don't know what to say, so I think his wisest thing is to keep my mouth closed. That guy's just pathetic. That co This conversation is over. His imitation is very good, but it doesn't make me smile. Don't worry, Nance. He's in for a rather uncomfortable afternoon. What do you mean? I hit his cane. Oh, that's not cool. That's not cool. Dude, that- Dude, that's not funny! Give it back! Really, Brian? Are we going to steal candy from children, too? Uh... Yeah, it might may not be the classiest thing I've done. Can we please give it back to him, like, immediately? Do you think he's noticed it's gone already? You mean you want to try and sneak his cane back in place without apologizing? I just... I... I just keep sinking lower in your appreciation, huh? Just tell me where it is, I'll give it to him and apologize, okay? No, let's both go. I'll wait here. I'd rather not have to apologize to him for something I didn't do. We peek through the gra glass. Peter has his back to the window right now. She'll hate me for this, huh? I think if she hated you, you'd know. They were all caught up in their conversation. And Peter was so smug, I wanted him to feel bad a little bit. So I hit his cane in the men's room. It was supposed to be a metaphor for him being a shithead. I shake my hand. Not good, huh? No, not good. You're going to take a wheelchair from a person who's in a wheelchair and they're like, that's a joke too? I think the less we talk about this, the better. Oh, uh, yeah. There's no way for us to walk into the store unnoticed. No, I'm afraid not. Ryan takes a br deep breath. Just so, just you take the cane and give it back. I'll do the talking, deal? One, two, three. I push the glass door open. When the bell rings, Peter turns around. His right hand goes to the place where his cane was supposed to be, but finds only empty air. Uh, if you're looking for your cane, I took it. I find, the, I find the cane and place it on the counter. I'm sorry. Peter looks at the cane and folds his hands. I took it because I wanted... It was a prank, okay? It was supposed to make Nancy laugh. Uh, did she? No. No, she didn't. Peter, really? It was a stupid joke, but we're here to give you your cane back and to apologize. Yes? Uh, okay. So are we cool? Peter nods. Yeah. Rather cold, but I guess it's all we'll get. Thanks, man. You guys were assholes. Of course he's not going to be happy. Peter grabs the cane from Brian's hand and leans it against the wall. Brian seems to deflate, the tension on his shoulders fading away. He expected this to be worse. I know I expected this to be worse. Uh, sorry? Brian leaves. I should follow, but I don't. I can't. Uh, what is it? I don't know. I, I expected you to be, like, really angry. Is this it? Is it over? Peter shrugs. So you're, you're not angry? Uh, look, just go away, would you? So you are. So what? What is this supposed to do? To you feel, according to you. I, I, I don't know. I just want to make it okay. Make it up to you. You can't make it okay. You can't make it... it, it you, you, what, what can you... Ah! What you can make is it, it's shorter. I... I guess I could do one thing he's asked of me. I leave him alone. Before I know it, it's time for the concert. The concert is raucous fun. As raucous but fun. Nancy doesn't stay still for a second. She jumps and twirls and pumps her mother motherfucking fists. I wish she fist me. <laughs> Brian's guitar is a wonderful addition to the band. The noise is overwhelming, but their energy is contagious. Karen and I jump and cheer. We have a wonderful time. The 703 bus from... All Trail, Destination Rockfield, will depart in five minutes from Doc B. 
I repeat, 705 bucks from, uh... That's yours. Oh, we're gonna miss you. You have to come visit this summer so we can surf together. And make fun of the tourists? I'm, I'm a tourist. You're not. You're our friend. I feel happy to hear that. Uh, you got all your things, right? I got everything, Mom! Shut up! Not worry, because you're so careless and stupid. I hug Karen. It was wonderful! Or, it was wonderful! I'll be happy I came! I'm all, I'll be always happy I came! I'm happy and grateful you invited me here! Thanks, Karen! In time, friend! Hurry or the bus will leave without you! I quickly climb inside the bus and take my place next to the window. I wave them goodbye until there's a spot behind me. And settle comfortably on my seat. It was just a short holiday and it didn't make me feel a different person, but I feel happy. I feel refreshed. Like good things can happen. And do happen to me. I smile as I fall asleep. Thinking about them all. And that's the ending. I was hoping there'd be a little more of a payoff. Alright, so we're going to try one other ending. Uh, when we find out about the cane... Uh, instead of telling them to give them back, we're going to be like, Why would you do that? Hey, don't get mad at me. It's just a joke. Well, I don't think it's funny. No, Brian, that's a mean thing to do. Oh, damn, baby, I just did it for you. W what do you mean you did it for me? No, nothing. Just get back at him, you know, for being such a snob. He was always smi- He was smiling and all shuck smile, but it quickly fades from his face when he sees the look on Nancy's. You did it for for me? She's connecting the dots, and she doesn't like the picture she's beginning to see. You didn't do it because you thought it was funny? You did it for me? Nancy takes a step forward, closing the distance between herself and Brian. For me to get back at him? I don't realize. I'm backing away slowly until my back hits the wall. Nancy, what the hell? You yourself said it, uh, he was a know-it-all, you know? You... You thought he beat me? Her index finger taps his chest. Like she wants her words to pierce him. You thought he was right? She's speaking through gritted teeth. You're out of the band. Oh, that's our moment. What the? She shoves him hard. He stumbles. Out of the band. You get nowhere with your stupid band. Well, you're lucky then, since you're not a part of it. Brian mumbles some words under his breath, then he turns around. Nancy grabs him by his sleeve. Wait. Tell me where you hit his goddamn cane! Nancy's eyes won't meet Peter's as she sets the cane on the counter. Here. Her voice does edge when she speaks. It wasn't me. I didn't do this. I'm not that kind of a person. She runs a hand through her hair. She seems strained, tired. Peter, on the other hand, well, he still looks rather frosty. He's not as tense as before. I don't hang out with that kind of person. Not if I know where, what they're like. Okay. Uh, apology accepted. I kicked that idiot out of the band. Huh. If you could still play, I'd rather have you. Let's not... What I mean is I respect you, okay? I disagree with you. I don't like you, but I respect you. I respect you, too. Nancy holds out her hand. Peter looks at it, tits his... Oh, tilts his hand. He doesn't tit his hand. <laughs> what the hell is that? Then shakes Nancy's hand. Friends? Friends. Will you come to my will you come to my concert? Are you still having one? But you got a new guitarist! About that? Oh yeah, we're in. My guitar is a friend. Her weight feels right. Her gut strings don't hurt my fingers. It's no wonder I sound better than when I was playing the electric guitar. I borrowed from Peter. Nancy tits her hand or tilts her head to the side. Lucas shrugs. Well You're here and we don't have time to find anybody else. You're in! That's it? I don't want to play good music with an asshole. I'd rather be playing bad music with you. Thanks? It stings a little to have such a lukewarm welcome. I'm better when I play my own songs. Do you want to play one of your songs in the concert? Are you serious? <laughs> Nancy nods solemnly. Of course I am. Oh, you're so stupid. You'll have to sing it by yourself, but if you're up to it, the stage is yours. My mind races. Which of the songs I've written could we use? All of a sudden, they all seem too stupid. Not good enough. I have to write a new one. That seems like we have really short time. I'll be back! Where are you going? 
I'll be back with a song or not at all! <laughs> they kind of need you to come back. Me and my guitar run out of Nancy's place, filled with purpose. It's cold, really cold on the beach. The only other living beings around are three seagulls and one stray dog. So we have to write that a, a song about them. The sand feels cold and compact. It seems as if this couldn't be the yellowish dust that would burn the soles of my feet in summer. But it is. It is. It's the same. The roaring of the sea dares me. I accept the challenge. I hear the wind. I'm not leaving until my motherfucking song is written. This could take a while. Karen sits down next to me, carefully placing her basket on the sand. Are we having a picnic? You had me worried, you know. You just wander off and I don't know where you are. Ah. I didn't know where you went. And when I called Nancy, she said you ran away screaming. My accent looked cooler in my memory. <laughs> I strum my guitar absentmindedly. Karen rests her hand on my chin. And looks out at the ocean. I thought, where would a hopeless romantic be? I wanted to sound cool, you know, to write a song next to the ocean. Did it work? I'm on it! She pours coffee from the thermos out of the cup and holds it out to me. The person who made this game, I really like the music cue right there. That was really good. The warmth of the plastic cup on my hand makes me sigh in delight. Wow, thank you for this. My hands were so cold. I didn't know it. No, I needed it, but I really did. It's coffee, genius. You're supposed to drink it, not just hold it. I take a quick gulp, and I swear it scalds my throat. Thanks for burning my throat, Karen. It burns! Karen laughs. <laughs> Serves you right for making me walk in the cold looking for you, you insensitive meanie. Yikes! You, you really don't have to stay if it's too cold. Or you don't want to. Hmm, how long would stay in here? I kind of made a solemn vow about not leaving till my work is done. Maybe she's going to die on the beach. And you know how my solemn vows are! Karen cracks a smile. You know me. I do. I want my gesture, my intention to create the real thing, like a Pepsi! What do you call me? What you call me being a romantic is a... It's you being a romantic and a drama queen. Coffee's a lot more drinkable now. I sip from my cup. It's just that my life, my talent, never holds up to what I dream. Now I hear this thing you started by inviting me here to come. Oh, you invited me to come, good. This is like the beginning of a dream. Like by being here, a dream is beginning to be dreamt. These things don't happen to me at home. You don't chase them at home. Streets I walk at Rockford, Rockfield are just streets they walk through. They walked them with me. They walked them without me. They're walking them now. Only when Karen lightly touches my hand, I realize that I had closed in a fist. You're here. I relax my hand. You're here writing a song a lot of people will enjoy. Karen fingers. Whoa! I say Karen fingers me. Karen fingers are warm in mine. Mine coochie hole. <laughs> Have I been rude to you? I mean. I've been spending most of my time here with Nancy, and... I'm really happy you found Nancy in the band. I read your posts online. I knew how you felt, and I worried so. All I could do for you was to get you out of your house, but actually, I had no idea of what I'd do once you got here. I'm an idiot. Yeah, it's not like I'm that fun to be around. I bite my lip. What? Thanks for everything. Everything, Karen. Um... I know I'm not fun to be around. Yeah, that's what I thought you'd say. I wouldn't be around you if I thought you were wasting my time. So, um, if you want to thank me, thank me with a smile. I smile. Now do your magic. Here goes. Before I know it, it's motherfucking concert time. This is the back door to Horrible Dancers. Today, we enter and leave through here so as to not bother the customers with our bulky instruments. I feel a weird kind of pride over this. Tonight, I'm not a customer. Tonight, I'm an entertainer. Tonight's the night. It's time to face the music or something? Oh. Welcome, friends. As expected, Nancy is a natural, has, has a natural stage presence. I think she's not even a bit nervous. I'm Nancy. I still glance at Lucas. He looks focused and determined. So it's only me having a heart attack here then. Good to know. Lucas on drums, rhyme on guitar. We are the Burnt Bridges. And just like that, we begin. Whoa! She's on acid or something. A weird sensation of time like bubblegum, stretching endlessly, but unable to appease my hunger. All the feelings I've ever felt about music and playing in front of people, they don't matter. They're the only important thing in the world. Each musical note chases the next. I chase my heartbeat. 
When the time comes for me to play my song, my own song, I do it in a daze. I want to play my own music in front of people. Then the lights are back out and my throat is dry. Applause! I shiver, though I'm covered in sweat. I spy Peter, sitting on a tall stool, sipping from his brightly colored glass. I feel Karen smile at me across the crowded room. She blows a kiss my way. I pretend to catch it. With my vagina. <laughs> The time accelerates as people go back to their drinks, their conversations, and turn their backs on us. It's over, man. It's over. I snap back into focus while Nancy unplugs the amplifiers, and Lucas seems to disassemble his drum kit three times faster than he assembled it. There's no way we'll all fit into the same taxi. The cab driver eyes us suspiciously. I'd like to tell them that no matter what we look like, we're only high on the excitement of tonight's gig, but I guess it's pointless to convince someone who has already formed such a strong opinion. After helping Lucas fit the drum kit on the taxi's trunk and the guitar in the back seat, we wave him goodbye. We should uh, hail a taxi ourselves. I'd really walk a bit, don't you? You're not tired? I'm past tired. I know I could s I'll sleep all day tomorrow, but right now I just cut it. I'm on a post-show high, baby. Then I'll walk you home. Nancy clings to my arm. Uh, how would I ever make it home without my gallant protector? Let's not get lost again. We walk arm in arm. I lean closer to her and start to thinking of something casual to say anything, as long as it doesn't make me sound like a fool in the fool in love I am. Ooh. I swallow loudly, but I say nothing. She rests her head on my shoulder and smiles. It makes me think of something she said to me. It never hurts to ask for what you want. Can you put a finger in my vagina? I mean, I don't I don't want this to be over. I want this to begin. I'm getting uh, needlessly rhetoric. I, I want to kiss you. I've been wanting you to do that, too. She throws her arms around my neck. I close my eyes. Our lips touch. It's fireworks. I breathe in. No, I don't think that's how you kiss. I don't you think you're like, oh, I'm going to suck you in. I, sm I smell her sweat, her shampooed hair. We're in a dimly lit street, in a city I barely know. I should be scared. I should be thinking of how something dangerous could happen, of how likely I am to screw this up, of how this won't work anyway, of how this bubble will burst at any moment. I take the bus back home. I should be doing that, but instead I'm kissing a girl I find attractive, exciting, and fun. I break that kiss and I throw my bat head back and howl. Oh! She's gonna think you're a nut job. Instead of being weirded out, she laughs. She laughs louder as we bump into each other, eager to kiss again. And whatever happens next doesn't matter because this moment is exactly what I want it to be. Yeah! It's making out with my lovely musical woman after a concert. That's a happy ending. So I want to thank everybody who's watched. This ended up being much longer than I thought. There are three endings I didn't get. If you would like to explore those, I will leave a link in the uh, description as always. Or at least I'll try to remember. Um, and I really enjoyed the game. Thanks to the people from the forums. You can find cool games there. And thanks to the friends and strangers who believe that the author could write romance. And most of all, thanks to you, everyone who bothered to, bothered to watch, any of you who bothered to play this. This was a lot of fun. And um, I'll see you all in the next LP. See you next time.